everybody it's the drive to school podcast i am pastor harrison goodman the content executive for higher Driving. things and joining me today is my boss uh so we got to behave this is erica jacoby no. she is the executive director of higher things um and not at all a bad influence on our personal behavior never never look i was driving honk honk beep beep where's your seatbelt though oh that's bad, bad influence nobody else is wearing one you're not wearing one like, oh, I, like, that I like that was foreshadowing. What are we? Uh, so we, we've been talking about logical fallacies. We've been talking about how to think gooder. Uh, so so uh, that that's important. Uh, we're talking about today the bandwagon effect, right? Yeah, yeah. The the logical fallacy that's called the bandwagon fallacy. And um, before we were uh, we were chatting about this before we actually started recording, and um, it occurred to me that I didn't really know what the term bandwagon came from. So I actually had to look that up. It's one of those old terms. Like, what did you say? What's an old term the kids wouldn't get nowadays? Oh, like, like the rotary phone. A floppy disk. Um, yeah, like a floppy disk. Computers have not had that for uh, uh, since the 1900s, um, but it's still a floppy disk. And so you just know yeah. it means save, but you don't know what it's from because you've never actually held a disk. Right, right, right. Kids, you can Google floppy disk. It'll, it, you, you'll understand. It used to be how we recorded things like on, on a computer. Now you, now it's just in the cloud. There was no cloud before kids. Anywho, we're, we're teaching. We're What's always teaching. That's what, anyway, so a bandwagon is an old school term. It goes way back in the day before everybody had a car. Um, and it was a kind of ornate and um, tall wagon where a band of musicians would play like in a circus or a parade. So they would, with the horses would pull them around. So that was literally the, the bandwagon. So there you go. Um, now the bandwagon effect, which folks are, you know, more familiar with is um, an activity or a cause that is currently fashionable or, or profitable. And that effect is used to describe the um, the tendency of people to uh, groups of people to adopt the same behaviors or attitudes. So it's kind of like everybody think or mob think. Right. So you see sense. the fancy wagon go by and you're like, they're cool. I want to be like them. And everybody else is going to do the same yeah. thing. And pretty soon it, it snowballs because now everybody's trying to do the same thing to look good. And if you're the one guy in the room who will not do the, the, the cool thing, well, then you're yeah. me. That means you want to jump on the bandwagon, be part of the band. You want to be mm -hmm. part of the cool kid. All right. Yeah. So um, where do we see this then today? Give me an example. One. Yeah. So the, a bandwagon fallacy is um, this concept. You would use this argument, um, this fallacy, uh, if you're trying to um, convince someone of your argument because a significant uh, group or population of people believe it's true or important. OK, um, so that doesn't really lend credibility or believability to your argument. Right. Just because everybody else is doing it. So let me give you an example. Kids love this one. This is probably the most common one used with kids and parents. I, I mean, you're a parent. You can agree with me or disagree with me. For example, if I tell my kid you aren't allowed to have a cell phone until you are 16 and the kid's answer is what? Well, but that's not mom, right because all my friends already have one and they're not 16. All my friends and then nobody will talk to me and I won't know what's going on. And, 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 and so that's not fair because every single kid in my class has a cell phone, right? So right. that so would be. Response, the parent then is, well, if all of the other kids jumped off a bridge, would you do it too? Yeah. I know his conversation goes. Yeah. Um, so that's, that, that kind of stopped me from getting a cell phone. Uh, but I, I don't know if it necessarily <laughs> right? addresses the thing. Cause this is actually a thing in the church too. It um, is. We, we've yeah. actually watched this play itself out when it comes to, to how we deal with science for a long time. Um, so we, we've sort of, you, you see it not only today where everybody says, well, nobody believes in creation. It's, everybody believes in evolution. So why would you be the one person left here standing backwards and, and sort of intentionally looking ignorant if every scientist believes that, well, every scientist that matters believes that that evolution yeah. is there. And then we watched it sort of play itself out, uh, not only sort of walking back through history to sort of say, well, only the only people who would believe in religion believed it because science didn't have a better answer yet. And so it thundered because God was mad at you. Um, when right. you sort of recognize that, Science has simply been the pursuit of truth. And so when the church then uh, throughout history has been deeply involved in the pursuit of truth, it's because we believe that Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. And so there have been people attached to the church that have 
made wonderful discoveries in, in the scientific community. And there have also been places where they've been persecuted by the very church that they claim to be a part of because um, it, it was a challenging thing. And we then need to sort of diverse, uh, diverge ourselves from saying whether or not all the cool kids are doing it isn't affecting whether or not it's true. Whether or not it's been abused, it right. doesn't affect whether or not it's true. Just maybe, is it true? Yeah, and we're really pointing out here, this is a lazy way of thinking about things, right? It's just, a, it's not using your brain, how'd you say it, good? Gooder. Using it, gooder, you, yeah, doing a gooder job of using your brain, right? It's just a lazy way of thinking. So um, it's never going to be something that really deeply, firmly convinces someone of the faith to just say, well, everybody believes this or doesn't. And no, even in the, even, argue. even. Right. Even in terms of um, creation versus evolution, um, people who who uh, believe the theory of evolution, notice I said believe, um, do so because they feel like the evidence is compelling. And that is the thing that you should debate on. Right. Is is whether correct, whether or not you can actually prove evolution, which you cannot. That's why it's a theory. It's the theory of evolution. So it's just lazy thinking to say, well, you know, most educated people believe in evolution. So like pff, you Christians, whatever, just lazy way of thinking. And you can, you can do it in the reverse as well. You could say to another Christian who maybe um, sees some compelling evidence in evolution, right? And wants that, to talk um, about it. And wants to talk about it. Um, you, a bad argument for a Christian, for one Christian to another would be to say, well, everybody believes it every Christian who wants to go to heaven believes it, right? That's ban that's another bandwagon, that's bandwagon thinking. So it's not going to compel or convince anyone. And you're really not being respectful in the argument and engaging them um, in, um, in a good practice for argument, right? You're, you're using logical fallacies, which is lazy thinking, as we said. So what do you do if you kind of catch this happening? Um, if, if you see somebody making a bandwagon um, a, approach or, or you catch yourself doing yeah. it? Um, well, I think it's, it's very much human nature and, and, um, recognize that sometimes when we feel a little cornered and a little frustrated, um, that this might be something you do, <laughs> uh, it's, it, it's a, it's an easy thing to do and just say, well, I just want to stay with my people and group with my people. Cause they believe this too, even though I can't really say why I think it really exposes in ourselves a little bit of, as I said, lazy thinking. And, um, I think it's okay to say, um, if you even do it right, if uh, you can just kind of back up and go, you know, that's kind of lazy thinking on my part. Um, like in the example of, of mom, even saying, Hey, you can't have a friend uh, or you can't have a cell phone just because all your friends do. Um, you can say, Hey mom, let's talk about the reasons you don't want me to have a cell phone. Right. Because that's the argument you actually want to engage in. Um, talk about the merits of having a cell phone, what it gives you access to. Um, talk about the negative things that that a cell phone potentially gives you access to too soon um, as a youth. So um, that's the actual. So really discover what the real element of the argument is about. Um, I think and, it, and I think that will be helpful. Talking about also appeals to where you're getting your information because that's just mm -hmm. as much a part of the bandwagon. Um, and so mm -hmm. like we also want to sort of not sort of get our get caught yelling, do your own research, and then YouTubing flat Earth videos. Right, um, right, right. right. But, that's but true. rather, I guess if you're only sort of taking information from uh, one people who are very set in their beliefs. Well, you're sort of saying, I know what the conclusion is because all the people say this, so I'm just going to parrot their ideas. Instead, what, what you kind of mentioned was sort of what are the compelling reasons for a cell phone? What are the honest reasons where it might not work from a, another side? Not putting words in your mouth, not not sort of walling off um, that, that side of the argument, but actually engaging with it and saying, all right, so what are what are the pros and cons of this how can i actually reason this out myself um it, it, it's it's means then that you're going to have to decide what issues are important enough to spend your time on because honestly like nobody has the brain power to, to really thoroughly debunk everything and like I, I i don't want to youtube flat earth videos just to debunk it if there's somebody in my life who's really sort of struggling with this i might walk with them through part of mm -hmm. it and sort of want to have this discussion but also there are places in your life where it's all right to sort of say i've been in an airplane and watched this thing i i'm, I'm not too worried about it right now um yeah. yep that's correct absolutely and so i think just just talk just talking about um the real 
essence of your argument is, is, a, is a good place to do that. And really, again, when you come and have a, um, an actual discussion or an argument where you are both assuming that you're trying to arrive at truth, then you're going to have a good discussion. Um, really, things disintegrate um, when you kind of don't keep that as your eye, like don't keep your eye on the prize. Right, mm -hmm. which is really trying to do a good job at arriving at some sort of truth, um, and I think that's when we fall into logical fallacies, as we said before, is when we're kind of we get lazy or we get afraid, um, and we just we just need to be right. I like it. Yeah. All right, boss. Thanks so much for teaching me how to think, Gooder. Uh, this is the drive. Everybody's doing it. All the cool kids are doing it. <laughs> we out. <laughs> <laughs>